Hamas terrorists have this chilling warning this morning. They will execute a hostage every time Israel strikes civilian targets in Gaza. More than 10 British nationals are feared dead or missing as the conflict escalates, and up to 60,000 British nationals are believed to be in either Israel or Gaza. Foreign Secretary James Cleverly joins us from Westminster. Uh, before we get on to what is happening now and what's going to happen in the coming days, your, your support for Israel, can I just start by asking you how we got to this uh, point? Um, we've been reading today that the um, advisor on the Middle East to the President of the United States, Jack Sullivan, said to a conference a week or so ago that he didn't have sleepless nights about the Middle East. He said the Middle East region is quieter today than it has been mm -hmm. for two decades. It does seem, Mr Cleverly, as though... Um, America, Israel, the whole of the world has been taken by surprise by what Hamas did over the weekend. Has this been a global failure of intelligence? Is this something which we're going to have to learn some big lessons about? Well, uh, as a former minister for the Middle East and North Africa, I have always been conscious of the ability of this region to uh, provide, uh, you know, terrible situations like this. So uh, I think that, you know, there was a, a degree of, uh, um, I think it was a rhetorical flourish uh, that Jake put forward there, because I think the international community is always conscious of the challenges of the Middle East and North Africa. But clearly, clearly nobody, including uh, Israel, uh, envisaged or predicted the scale of the terrorist atrocities that we saw in southern Israel over the weekend. Of course, we will have to ask and answer questions about what happened. Was there an opportunity to intervene earlier? Uh, what, were there things that we could have seen and could have acted upon uh, earlier? And, of course, there will be time for that. At this point in time, of course, our priority is to uh, minimise uh, further terrorist atrocities uh, in Israel. Uh, Israel, of course, are prioritising the recovery of those people who have been kidnapped and the preservation of their uh, security. And just to stay on the intelligence for a moment, um, this was a very sophisticated operation for Hamas to do alone. Uh, if Iran turns out to be involved in this, financially or organisationally, that is very, very dangerous for the world. Um, what can you tell us now about how this could have happened in this way? And do you think Hamas had support from Iran? Well, Iran has been supporting, uh, funding uh, militia groups, terrorist organisations like Hamas for some time. So that is not uh, anything uh, new. Uh, at the moment, uh, you will have heard uh, Tony Blinken, who I speak with regu regularly, say that there is currently no uh, indication that Iran were directly involved in the planning and execution of this terrorist uh, atrocity. And I'm not going to speculate on what our response might be if we have intelligence uh, that updates uh, our uh, initial assessment on that. The simple truth is we know Iran has been a malign actor in the, uh, in the region and indeed beyond even on the shores of our own country. Uh, we do take action. We sanction uh, a number of entities in, in uh, Iran, including the IRGC uh, in its entirety. But at the moment, of course, we are very much focused on supporting Israel to, um, uh, to reassert the security situation within Israel and to, uh, to regain or to um, uh, evacuate and help escape those people who have been kidnapped by the Hamas terrorists. And you'll be reassured there's strong cross-party support for what you're doing? Yes. Uh, look, um, this, is, this is no time to play party politics. And, and I know um, my uh, opposite number in the Labour Party and the, and the Labour leadership uh, are united in our support for uh, Israel. What do we know about the fate of uh, British citizens who are uh, in Israel or who may have been targeted, but also citizens in Gaza as well. You'll have heard that the First Minister of Scotland, Hamza Youssef's in-laws, are in Gaza at the moment and don't seem able to get out. Well, of course, the British government uh, has a, a duty and a responsibility to support British nationals overseas. The situation in Israel is different to many others, like uh, the evacuation in Sudan, for example, because a lot of the Brits in Israel are dual nationals 
um, you know, uh, British Israelis who regard Israel as their permanent home. Many of them will be serving with the Israeli Defence Force. So uh, we will be coordinating and liaising very, very closely with the Israeli government to provide uh, the support if needed. Uh, and in many instances, it won't be requested. But if needed, we are standing ready to support. We are working with the air industry and Israeli air traffic control to ensure that there are still commercial flights leaving Israel for those Brits who want to leave. And of course, there are land borders from Israel into both Egypt and Jordan. With regard to Gaza, um, we maintain close coordination with the Egyptian uh, government about the, uh, the maintenance of the Rafah crossing, which is the land crossing from Gaza into uh, Egypt. Um, and uh, I know people have been leaving Gaza via that route. And with regard to those um, people who are currently still trapped uh, within Gaza, of course, their plight has been made immeasurably worse because of the actions of Hamas, um, perpetrating a, a terrorist atrocity like we saw in southern Israel uh, was inevitably going to trigger a uh, proportionate response uh, from Israel. And because Hamas habitually embeds its military operations within civilian infrastructure, that puts Palestinians uh, at risk. This is, this is very much on the shoulders of Hamas. How on earth do we fix this, Foreign Secretary? We understand that the Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas is planning a visit to Moscow. That's according to a Russian news outlet. Um, a date hasn't been set yet. This always, a conflict like this, always draws in other international actors. How far away are we from this being resolved swiftly and re-establishing a peaceful two-state solution? Well, this is an incredibly uh, difficult and painful uh, time. Um, the UK remains committed to a, a two-state solution with uh, Israelis and Palestinians uh, living in peace and security side by side. The actions perpetrated by Hamas, uh, of course, make that outcome uh, more difficult and further away. We are not going to give up on that uh, as an ultimate uh, aim, but the simple truth of the matter is the plight of the Palestinian people, the future of the Palestinian people, has been made much, much worse because of Hamas's actions. It's incredibly important to remember, of course, that Hamas does not represent all uh, the views or the voice of all Palestinian people. Yes. Uh, I spoke over the weekend with the leadership of the Palestinian Authority uh, on the West Bank, um, and it is, it is incredibly important that we do not give up hope. But this will be difficult, this will be painful, uh, and sadly I think um, there is a... a I mean, the truth of the matter is in the, in the short term, uh, this is likely to get worse before it gets better. Okay. But we will continue work with the Israeli government to try and bring about, ultimately, that two-state solution. Foreign Secretary James Cleverly, thank you very much. Thank you.